Hi kids, would anyone like some drugs? Drugs. Drugs. This one is my favourite of all the drugs because it looks like Smarties. What do you want in your sandwiches today, children? Drugs! <laughs> this show is good. So, this one's been a long time coming. Yeah, totally looking forward to the shouting matches that are going to ensue over this. This video was pretty much inevitable from the second I started my channel, because way back in the day, on an older channel that I had in 2009, where if any of you were subscribed, which... Well, no one was. You could have watched young me ranting about this Channel 4 show that everyone liked that I didn't from my flat at uni. Now, I understand that my grudge against skins is more based on spite than anything else, and spite's not exactly a good reason to dislike something, but in my defence, I can't help it and shut up and let me explain. I remember during my History A-levels, we reached a few weeks prior to our exams, and unlike with our other classes, our teacher said that lessons were still going to take place during reading week. His justification for that was, and I quote, Have you ever seen that Channel 4 show, Skins? No one studies. Now, I hadn't tried watching Skins at the time, but if I had, I probably would have responded to him with, Have you seen that Channel 4 show, Skins? Episode 1 ends with a group of teenagers who drive like this and don't get stopped by the police somehow, driving a girl who's overdosed on pills to a hospital while two of them have sex on the back seat, and then they accidentally drive the car into a lake, and nobody either died or got arrested during this entire stupid incident somehow. It kinda stuns me that there was even a debate over whether or not Skins was a realistic depiction of modern teenagers, because... Should this even have been a question? This is a drama. I watched back the whole first series in an attempt to understand my younger self's grudge against it, and while I didn't hate it nearly as much as teenage me did, I really don't think I was out of line to call it ridiculous. People always used to talk about how real skin supposedly was, and how it apparently spoke to some kind of universal teenage experience. And whenever I'd say that I thought it was stupid, people always responded with, but I do know people who lead their lives like the kids on skins. I don't know if it's just my cosseted suburban middle-class background that left me cold by it, but there's this whole storyline early in the series where Sid owes a drug dealer some money, and when he can't pay him back, the drug dealer comes after him and threatens to cut his balls off. Was this some kind of universal teenage experience that I missed out on? Was having a drug dealer threaten to cut your balls off just an everyday part of being a teenager in the late 2000s that I was just blissfully unaware of? Was that what all the cool kids were doing while I was studying? Oh come on Stuart, the car in the lake thing isn't meant to be serious, it's meant to be funny. Skins was always sort of meant to be half a comedy. Eh, alright, sure. And yes, I suppose Skins did deserve all the praise it got if you've never heard incredibly obvious and overdone cock jokes before. <laughs> she likes you. <sighs> okay, alright. Let's take the general response that I usually got to my opinion on Skins back in the day as read, and say that maybe I heavily disliked the show because I was the sort of kid who never got invited to parties, and was and still am a nerd. And that's why I resented it. It was just jealousy. Maybe people who defended Skins when I bashed it were right, and that it was because I was so distant from the show and had no character to identify with. Well, actually, I did. The character that someone like me was clearly supposed to identify with was Sid, the shy nerdy guy. And we can tell that he's a shy nerdy guy because he wears glasses, has greasy skin, and one of the first scenes with him in episode 1 is of him masturbating to pornography, and wait, where's that word come from? S seriously, it's not me doing that, honest, it just appeared. Now, I know some younger viewers may be struggling to understand this scene, but to clarify, before smartphones, pornography actually used to be printed on these bits of flappy stuff called paper. 
Thing is though, it was quite hard for me to relate to Sid, because the plot in episode 1 revolves around him and Tony trying to get hold of some dope so that they can go to a party and get a girl, any girl, so high that she'll have sex with Sid without realising that he is a glasses nerd. We go to the party and we get a girl catastrophically spliffed up. In her confused state, she comes to believe, however momentarily, that you're attractive enough to shag. Which is really thoroughly gross and, you know, date rape? Yeah, all right, stuff like this does happen in the real world, but it was always kind of hard for me to latch onto the characters, even on a level of wanting to watch them grow as people and learn a lesson, when what they say and do right from the start of the first episode is... you know, gross. Hey Cass, so Tony and I were plotting to rape you in episode one? Oh, wow. And yes, I know that watching them learn a lesson and grow as people is supposed to be the point. The first series ends with Tony having a scheme to get revenge on his ex-girlfriend by getting her and this new guy Josh she's with to break up by putting naked pictures of Josh's sister on his phone. And then Josh gets revenge on Tony by kidnapping his sister and he says that he's going to force him to rape her. I'm sure I'm supposed to feel something watching Tony recover from the trauma of this incident, but I didn't, because Tony Stoneham was possibly the most utterly loathsome character that I've ever seen in a piece of fiction. Basically, what they tried to do in Season 1 was establish Tony as an anti-hero. He's this cocky and arrogant teen whose ego needs to be taken down a peg or two, so they have him play mind games with his girlfriend, go too far, push all his friends away, and then he has to face up to the consequences of his actions and redeem himself. Thing is though, they went so far beyond making Tony a flawed human being to the point where he's a genuinely malevolent piece of utter shit. You watch him treat his girlfriend appallingly, he psychologically abuses her, he undermines her, he cheats on her. He bullies his supposed best friend about his virginity constantly. I honestly didn't see anything redeemable about Tony, and when he finally starts to get what's coming to him in the last couple of episodes, I know that the sad music is telling me to feel sorry for him, but I just couldn't, because I honestly wanted him to get what's coming to him. I actually cheered when he got hit by that car at the end of the series. When his sister's recovering in hospital after an overdose, his parents start accusing Tony of being responsible for this, when it's like the one occasion where he's actually innocent. Well, not totally, because the Josh incident was actually triggered by something shitty that Tony did. And you're meant to be sat there going, wow, how unfair, it's not his fault Effie overdosed. You in your horrid little ways, always, at other people's expense. Hang on. That's enough. But instead, I was actually willing his parents on and going, go on, it is all his fault. What are you going to do to him? Hey, I've got an idea. How about you ship the worthless layabout off to the army? That'll knock some sense into him. Oh my god, I turned into someone's grumpy middle-aged dad. What the fuck has this show turned me into? Yeah, I kinda see why that teacher's view of young people was coloured by skins, because it basically spends most of its runtime going, Grr, kids today, all a bunch of drug-fueled joyriding layabouts, aren't they? Bring back national service, that's what I bloody say! When I was a teenager, I always had this feeling of being talked down to by skins. A lot of it probably comes from that incident with that teacher, but watching it was kind of an experience of going, Wow, is this really what adults think of me? They genuinely think I'm this drug fueled joyriding layabout. Wait, is that what they want to think teenage life is like? This glorious, free-spirited thrill ride? Is this some kind of wistful power fantasy for them? Because I never got to live a life like the kids on Skins. Most of my teenage years consisted of being made to sit in a series of rooms with adults glowering at me and going, <laughs> bloody kids today, bet you even need my supervision to revise for your exams at all, don't you, you work-shy layabouts? I mean, yeah, alright, a drama based on my teenage years probably wouldn't have exactly made for a compelling piece of television, but in my defence, that was real. You people want real, don't you? And there is a bit of that with Sid's dad, played by Peter Capaldi, but not much of it. And coming back to things like the joyriding, why the fuck have the police got no presence in this series? They show up like once in episode 8, and that's it. If we wanted this show to be real, then why not have some real-world consequences for any of the constant law-breaking that keeps happening in plain sight? And because I didn't buy any of the ludicrous, over-the-top, trying-too-hard-to-be-edgy consequences like the threat of debollocking that I mentioned earlier, the show ended up not even having much of a warning tone to it. I remember going into it as a team with absolutely no desire to do drugs and break the law, and coming out of it almost wanting to do drugs and break the law. That lifestyle sounded cool and fun and interesting and made you cool and fun and popular, and I was none of those things. And isn't that kind of, um, the opposite of the message this show was supposed to be sending?
Because when people would tell me that their lives were like the lives of the kids on Skins, or their friends lived like that, there was a sense of them bragging their... I swear that Skins was like the inverse of an after-school special. People used to call Skins relatable all the time, but to me it was a pretty simplistic, hedonistic teenage fantasy. The most teenage fantasy bit of it, of course, being this. Is this the most 2007 thing that you've ever seen, or what? Anyway, now that I've pissed people nostalgic for this show off, let's all have dinner. Today I will be making drug stir-fry. 